guys welcome back you are on number five five can't count number five of the fur tutorial or fur friday today we're going to be doing a seal again i'm going to pop up the main reference picture and the snippet from the reference so you can see what part we are drawing because again fur can look very odd when it's out of context so it just gives you an idea of the area that we're looking at I'm keeping this real time and purely because it took just over 15 minutes to complete so I thought I might as well you know if I do any shorter ones I'll keep them real time instead of having to time lapse them and then that way you get to see the technique that I use in real time every artist of course is going to have their own technique of doing things this is just personally how I do it you will maybe do something slightly different somebody else will do something slightly different there's no right or wrong way it's your way and my way so you'll find whatever works best for you guys so the colors that we are using today are the cold gray one the cold gray two cold gray i think i put three there but i believe i actually meant four. Oh no okay cold gray one cold gray three and cold gray four as i don't end up using cold gray two because it's there's not enough of a contrast and we're also using the Payne's gray so to begin with i'm using the Payne's gray to um put in where our main shadow areas are on the fur because they are actually pretty prominent on this particular fur type i think where we are on the body as well is the fur is almost mottled so it's changing color as we go down so it made sense to just get those in straight away so we don't lose them uh, I've then gone in now with the cold grey 5 there's a little patches of snow there on his fur which you'll probably be able to see on the bigger picture rather than the I don't know what way I'm pointing because I don't know what way I'm going to end up on the video but yeah um, I'm probably not again going to talk through the entire video because there's only so much of my voice you can put up with uh, but yeah just to give you the basis we pretty much we blend with the cold grey one we fill with the cold grey three and we do all of our shadows and our shading with our paints grey and our cold grey five I on the shadow area up on the top left top left top left when you're looking at it um is in shadow so i've put that in shadow and i've done that as a flat color as you've mentioned no as i've mentioned before in previous videos you don't have to put first stroke for every type of fur that you see because actually sometimes flat color is more beneficial so I did loosely put in with the cold grey three, I think this is actually, not four. Do you know what? I can't actually remember. Cold grey four, four. The cold grey four, we're putting in the fur detail. And I'm being, although they're all going in the same direction, there's a slight angle on each one. Again, in previous videos, I've mentioned about crisscrossing, patching over, and making it a little bit messier because it isn't always as clear as having them in exactly the same direction. So you wanna go with the flow of the fur, but you don't necessarily have to have every single one in a straight line next to each other. So very important. You can see how actually quite quick I'm doing this. This is real time, and I'm doing it quite quick, and I'm being quite loose with the way that I'm doing it and that's essentially what you want to do. So yeah, just very loosely, very quickly, get them in the right direction. I tend to keep my wrist fairly still when I do this and it's a really hard I'll see if I can show you on the little square that you'll see me on on your video but I tend to hold my wrist quite still on the desk and just use my fingers to use the motion and that's what I tend to do when I do uh, first strokes 
again that's how I do it you might find that you do it differently going over with the cold grey one and we're blending over the whole lot that helps us to soften those under fur strokes gives us another coating over the top smooths everything out blends it out so when we come over and add the other layers that is when we eventually start to create depth in that fur what I'll do is instead of me sitting here in silence staring at this for the next portion is I'll just pop back up on your screen when it's relevant and the next bit of information is helpful to you um, otherwise you may as well just watch the little snippets of each standard piece peace and quiet instead of listening to this voice all the time Just to add a quick snippet in, uh, depending on the type of fur you do, can depend on the motion that you do your pencils with. Generally, if you've watched me for a while now, you know that I work in ovals. Um, I tend not to work backwards and forwards and I don't work in circles. Ovals I find are best for me. But depending on the fur type that you have, you can actually get away with an up-down motion. But because there's a curve on this fur, ideally you want to keep ovals when you're doing your top coats or your burnishing coats or even um, just your bulk colours. Now going in with the cold grey 3 and again we're starting to add some shading here now and although I'm doing the up and down motions in what looks like quick succession just standard up and down I'm changing and altering where my finger direction is going. I know it sounds really stupid but if you get a blank bit of paper keep your wrists still and just move your fingers. I'm going to zoom and see if we can get this for the camera to see. So is it going to do it? Yeah I'm on camera. Okay so rather than using your wrist to move your hand move your fingers. Practice this movement but Practice doing it in different directions. And what I mean by that is practice how far down your thumb goes, up. In fact, the best way to think of it is a clock. So depending on the direction you're drawing, push your thumb up to 12 o'clock, push your thumb up to 12, push it to 11, push it to 10, push it to nine, and just practice that motion and just very gently moving around that clock. And that motion, will help you get some sort of first strokes in without ever having to leave the paper and sometimes that constant lifting off can actually one tire your hand one get very boring and repetitive and two if you go down each time too hard on your pencil you can create um like when you first put marker down if you leave it there too long you get sort of like that circle at the end it's really hard to describe um, but I find that doing that motion helps give you a much more even pencil stroke across doing all your fur so again we're just blending out with the cold grey 3 I'm starting to add a bit of pressure where all the shadows are again if you look at the reference two different references and the shadows in the particular area I'm doing is quite subtle so it's a case of building them up. I much prefer to build up slowly rather than going too dark too quickly. Um, I'm sure if you're somebody who likes to go in quite dark quite quick, this would actually be a much quicker process for you. But personally for me, I like to blend in between each layer and yeah, just like to give it as much smoothness as possible because it all helps towards getting that soft, sumptuous fur that seals and animals have. I've now gone in with Payne's Grey. And again we're strengthening up so each layer we come up we're strengthening up our shadows we're strengthening up the 
dark lines and the shadow lines on the fur strokes. We are just accentuating what we see in our reference picture. Again, you can see that my hand is mainly being controlled by my fingers and not my wrist. Um, one, it, as I say, it takes a bit less pressure out of your wrist because you, you can get a lot of wrist ache when you're drawing. And I did find actually after recording four of these in a row <laughs> that my wrist and my hands were really starting to ache because you were working in, in such small sections at a time. But again, I've done this small study in just over 15 minutes. If you've got a sketchbook, grab some reference pictures. As I say, go to Pexels, go to Pixabay, go to Pinterest. Um, make sure that if you're taking these any further than your sketchbook, that they are, of course, copyright free. But if they're just for your sketchbook, Pexels and Pixabay and things are, are brilliant just for quick references sit down with the sketchbook just sketch a few things out if you've got a pet set next next to you a pet sat next to you then of course you can look at that you can even look at your friend's hair study their hair it's all about looking at shapes colors movement and direction more than looking at it as cat fur dog fur human hair scales um, i think we can overcomplicate things sometimes by trying to draw exactly what they are rather than drawing just what we see. It's always been my biggest tip. Draw what you see, not what you think should be there. It makes a huge, huge difference towards progressing forward. We're blending over again with the cold grey three. Uh, just again, softening those pencil strokes. And then we're going back in again with our paints grey and again, strengthening the shadows each time we're just blending between each layer. blending again with the cold grey one and you'll see that actually now I'm going in large ocean, ocean I can't talk today large oval motions and I'm going over the whole portrait I'm just blending the whole lot together people worry a little bit too much about making something muddy and about blending over the whole thing but you'll actually be surprised when it comes to animal portraits and animal fur how much difference doing that blending can actually make so it's really worth having a go and if you're not sure try it on a separate piece of paper and if you find it goes muddy maybe change your pressure maybe change it differently or maybe even change the color of pencil that you're going to be blending and burnishing with not everybody wants to burnish by the way so i know it's not everybody's cup of tea you don't have to burnish if you blend gently over the top you still get a blend, but you don't go as far to burnish it. I'm just going to keep strengthening the shadows with the cold grey 3 and the Payne's grey. We are nearing the last part of the shading, so there's not a huge amount left with regards to getting in detail it's just a case now of finishing up so I am going to leave you there hopefully you have found this of use let me know in the comments below if there's any type of fur that you want covered I might already have it planned I might have already done it so it's worth checking the series hit that subscribe button love a thumbs up hit the bell button for notification for all otherwise you don't get notified when these videos go up and i shall see you guys in the next video bye